Hi, Darren Mangum here, managing partner of the securities law firm of Mangum & Associates. Um, I just thought I would uh, put out another video here. Thank you to everyone who are subscribing. And uh, if this is helpful content, we appreciate you liking us and feel free to share it with your, uh, with your partners and with your other clients. Um, and also thank you to our PPM attorney subscribers that have been watching us over the years. Uh, we appreciate your, your continued support. Um, today I want to talk to you about a little bit about alphabet soup of uh, raising capital. When I say alphabet soup, I mean the different regulations uh, that uh, come into play. The most common ones that are used uh, currently to raise capital. Uh, the good news is that there's lots of different options available uh, to raise capital. Obviously, our firm we make make sure you do it correctly, and uh, we're obviously on the on the uh, cutting edge of making sure everything is uh, being done in accordance with current law, which is obviously always in flux and always changing. So um, this uh, video I wanted to talk about, uh, uh, you know, wh when do you, when do you know which, re which regulation you should be using? Uh, and a lot of it turns on the kinds of investors you're trying to attract to your company, whether you're doing a real estate project, you're trying to attract investors for that, or maybe you have a real estate investment fund, a lending fund. Maybe you have, uh, maybe, you know, we have uh, lots of tech company clients that are raising capital for their new venture, uh, energy. Um, you know, we're active in the cannabis space. We're active in uh, cryptocurrency, different, different, you know, investment contracts, any sort of, uh, any sort of uh, vehicle to raise capital. We can certainly help you. Uh, navigate um, the the minefields and and you know it looks like a like a mine if you think of a, a minefield covered with alphabet soup right up to your up to your knees so that's kind of the securities landscape right and obviously if you know uh, if you know what you're doing and if you have competent securities counsel uh, helping you um, makes your life a lot easier so um, but certainly uh, you know, as far as the types of uh, types of investors, if you want to attract, you really need to determine whether you're going to be attracting smaller, uh, uh, non-accredited investors, or if you're going to be bringing in a larger, uh, higher net worth accredited investors, or if you're wanting to bring in both. Right. So, if you just want to, if you want to bring in smaller, non-accredited investors, I mean, again, some clients don't want to mess around with. Uh, smaller, uh, not accredited investors. That's fine. Uh, but if you, if if your uh, if your venture uh, feels like you want to appeal to the smaller investor, or not accredited investor, uh, really the best options. You really have two options. Uh, one is regulation crowdfunding, which uh, now you know now allows you to raise up to fifty million or not sorry five million dollars every uh, twelve months. Under regulation crowdfunding, um, and you obviously have to go through our SEC registered portal, and so you have to do it properly and provide a full disclosure offering statement, uh, similar to a PPM, uh, an offering statement. Uh, but uh, that allows you to bring in non-accredited investors. Um, the other option for non-accredited investors is Regulation A, which is a much, much longer runway, much longer, more expensive process, probably four to five times the cost of a Regulation uh, crowdfunding offering. But certainly uh, regulation, or regulation A allows you to raise up to $75 million, uh, uh, every 12 months uh, from non-accredited investors. Um, obviously, there's a lot more regu regulatory hurdles to get through because Regulation A is a is a, uh, a fully registered offering with the SEC, so they have to get uh, you have to get SEC approval before you start offering it. Whereas Regulation Crowdfunding, uh, a lot quicker within 30 days, you we can have you up on a crowdfunding portal, crowdfunding platform, and you're able to start raising capital. So. Again, if you're attracting those non-accredited investors, then you know those are really your only two options uh, currently. Um, now, as far as accredited investors go, uh, certainly, um, you know, five hundred six C is is continues to be the big uh, workhorse that allows you to advertise publicly, advertise, and as long as you're advertising, making sure that it's only available to accredited investors, and as long as you verify that they're all they're all 100% are accredited. Uh, 506C is a great option. 
Um, and uh, so a lot of our clients are doing that. Um, now 506B is still there. 506B is uh, your traditional old fashioned private placement exemption uh, that really fits some, uh, some deals it really fits, especially if you already have a pre-existing relationship with those investors, then it allows you to bring up to 35 non-accredited investors and as many accre uh, accredited investors as you want. You know, the only downside uh, is that you cannot publicly solicit and advertise, right? So, you know, uh, for a lot of clients that need to, you know, get out there in social media and advertise and try to attract investors, you know, 506B has its limitations, uh, but certainly it's still available and a lot of clients still use that. So, um, Anyway, uh, we'd love to uh, help you uh, navigate this alphabet soup, and uh, certainly we've been at it now for uh, over going on over 21 years now. So um, certainly love to uh, connect with you. Feel free to again like or subscribe to this channel, or feel free to reach out to us, and we can talk about your specific deal and uh, help you navigate that. So anyway, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.